Hello everyone and welcome to the tentative last episode of this Let's Build series. In this video, I'll be finishing Mina's rig, posing her, and then making a turntable animation to showcase the final result. I'm not going to do a full IK rig today, I'm only going to do a basic deform. However, if everyone's interested, I can continue this model to make an IK rig with drivers, as well as some animation, but I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. I'm jumping right in. I already made the armature object in the last video, so I'm just going to select it and go into edit mode and start building the skeleton. To make that easier, I'm going to go into the armature data properties and I'm going to toggle in front so that way the bones won't be hidden by the character. And from here, I'm going to start making the spine, placing the new bone I made at the top of the pelvis and extruding up. Three bones in the torso, one in the neck, and one in the head. Then I placed a new bone where the collarbone would go. I thought the base of the spine was too high up, so I moved it down and adjusted the rest to fit. And from the base of the spine, extruded two new bones. The first one being the center of gravity bone, or the cog bone, and the other one being the hips bone. I took the spine and hips bone and paired them to the cog. I adjusted the curvature of the spine and then made a new bone which was going to become the pelvis. The pelvis bone isn't actually meant to be rotated or moved at all. Its primary function is to keep parts of the mesh static in this area. I scaled the bone down and set it in place. Then I got working on the arms, duplicating the clavicle bone and using it to begin building the rest of the arm. I began extruding and triangulating everything into place when I was startled by a rogue bone that was hovering over her hand. The UV warped facial bones were getting in the way of the rig, so I moved them to a new armature layer, then continued stuffing the bones into the mesh, like a reverse butcher. Then I got started working on the tail, placed a bone there and couldn't decide if I should parent it to the spine or the hips. Went with the spine for the moment and extruded out the tail in full. Then I had to name all the bones because I forgot to name it before I started extruding to save time. Since I've been parenting things, I forgot to parent the pelvis to the hip bones, and from there began making the legs by duplicating the pelvis and extruding it down to the toe. For this character, I wasn't going to have individual toe bones. The toes didn't even have the topology to support that kind of deformation anyway, so if in the future I had to animate the toes, it would have to be done through a shape key. Went on to finish the arm chain, parenting the arm to the clavicle, which I finally named, then connected the clavicle to the top spine bone. I renamed the head and neck bones to make them special, before extruding out the wrist. If you're new to the rigging process or don't already know, naming conventions are incredibly important to the rigging process. The .l and .r suffixes are incredibly important to make sure things work. They are what drive posing and editing symmetry and allow us to make special actions such as symmetrizing to save time when rigging. So it's making sure at this point that every bone was named and had their appropriate designator to make things easier down the line. I also had to make sure to disable deformation for the cog and hip bones because their only function was to be a container for the bones that do deform. I got frustrated working in the shader editor due to the clutter and returned back to the layout workspace from episode 3 to conquer the void. I solved the ancient riddle by tapping slash to exit local view space, then finished labeling all of the bones. Even though the rig wasn't finished yet, I wanted to symmetrize it now and test to see if everything deformed properly. I wanted to get a feeling to see if I was doing a good job up to now. So I did that, saved my file for safety reasons, and then went to bind the mesh to the rig and... I was smote by the gods of rigging for my hubris. Somewhere, somehow, something was causing a catastrophic auto-waiting error, meaning I was probably gonna have to hand paint this entire model. I don't even know what was causing the problem. There was no doubled vertices, all the topology was clean, and all the normals were correct. It was none of the common suspects that would normally cause this to happen. Was it the tails of the overcoat? Does it not know how to weight it to the legs? Is it the tails clipping through the overcoat? Was it the face? Could the mouth or eye planes be throwing it all off? Absolutely no clue. What I do know is I still had fingers and ears to set up. So I started with the fingers first, and the process was the same for all of them. I would go into edit mode, select the ring of edges that would be the base of the finger, place the 3D cursor there, and go back to the armature edit mode. Hit shift A to place a bone here, then went back to mesh edit mode to move the 3D cursor again, so I could snap the bone to the next point. It was a real pain in the ass to do it this way, but it was the only way that I could do it where I could have some level of precision. Once the fingers were done, I parented them to the wrist and made sure to name them after their corresponding finger, the index, middle, and small fingers. During the process of making the fingers, I wasn't really Really looking forward to the prospect of having to weight paint everything, so I tried to find a quick solution. If I couldn't weight paint all of the model, maybe I could do it piece by piece to isolate where the problem was and save some time. I decided to try this solution on the tail since it would be a simple bone chain and would be hard to screw up. To do this, I went into pose mode and selected the whole bone chain, then went into edit mode and selected the entire tail mesh. Then with both the armature and mesh objects selected, went into weight paint mode, turned on face masking, then went up here to the armature menu, clicked the wrong thing, and then clicked automatic- uh, yeah, of course, that didn't work. Anyway, and then made some ears, which I parented to the head. So I tried that over as well. Then to see if any of the bones got weighted from any of that automatic painting, I went into pose mode to select all the bones, and the tail was actually weighted. I had done something to get it to work, but I didn't even realize until I was editing this video that there might have been two possibilities as to why this happened. 
Number one, the automatic waiting did work and it just threw an error because something happened elsewhere. Or it's possible that the wrong thing that I clicked, wait from bone envelopes, was what actually solved the problem without me noticing. Either way, I was encouraged by this fact and tried again with the head. Nope. I think it really was the bone envelopes that had done the job, which is something I'll have to research, but now I'm gonna have to get into the thick of weight painting, starting with the areas furthest away from the root bone. I selected each ear and assigned them 100% influence to their respective bone groups, went onto the head, hid the ears and neck verts, and assigned 100% there as well. I did some testing to see how it all deformed, moved the eyes and mouth controllers closer to the face, then saw that the eye rig was broken again. Lovely. I realized the UV map slot for the UV warp modifier was empty this time, which was only part of the problem. The pupil texture was also no longer set to extend, but was set to clip for some reason. No idea why it happened, but it's fixed now. Went on to the legs and started painting the toes when I tried once again to see if I could get the automatic waiting to work. Selected all the bones, selected the mesh, and it actually worked this time. I was fully expecting and ready for it to throw the bone waiting error again, but I'm glad to see it didn't, though I did realize that the roll of the legs were problematic. I like to align the x-axis of the bone to the direction that it would naturally bend, so I turned on the axes and adjusted the roll values of the bone, either manually or by selecting all of them, picking a target, and calculating the roll based off the active target. I was so happy at the revelation that the waiting had worked that I had no choice but to pose them. I went on to select the upper body, the arms and the fingers, selected the mesh, and it worked again. It wasn't a fantastic wait, but at least I had something. Fingers were broken, I kind of expected that. But since the auto-waiting was working, I ran them through again and they were equally broken, but at least fixable. I studied where the figures were deforming incorrectly and set about removing all their influences from these areas and replacing them with the left hand's influence. This was a rather lengthy process and required extensive testing. The problem with weight painting is it's another one of those painful processes that make up 3D modeling. That's why there's a distinction between a modeler and a rigger as two separate professions. The weight painting is only one aspect of rigging, which also involves building mechanical parts like IK and the like. After a lengthy 8 minute session of trial and error, I considered the hand at least adequate. The thumb was kind enough to work from the beginning, when I realized I was going to have to do this exact same thing to the right hand. This vexed me. So of course the next course of action was to delete every single bone group in the right hand to copy over and mirror from the left hand, one group at a time. It's unfortunate that there wasn't a quick way to do this, believe me, I tried. Twice. The copying process only took two minutes, but the attempt to copy all of them at once took three. Once the hands were fixed, just about everything was weighted except for the center mass of the character, which still had some strange deformations. I had assumed at this point that the primary problem for the automatic weighting was located somewhere in the head, either mine or hers, since that's where it failed last time, and everything else has worked so far. So to prevent any loss of progress and hopefully a fail safe, I went and locked all of my good bone groups I just got done manually painting, selected all the bones, selected the mesh except for the head, clicked on automatic weight and <laughs> predictably it didn't work there was another problem here thought I could solve it by cutting off the coattails but <laughs> tried this again this time cutting the collar off and <laughs> fucking splendid absolutely nothing was working and it was at this point on the recording it was probably 12 in the morning a.m. not p.m. and the wait of seven hours of recording was starting to weigh on me i was getting moderately impatient but i persevered for the time being and tried to figure out how to start wearing this by hand again there was some influence from the arms i had to remove and also had to solve the issue with the side of the hips when the spine bent a lot of this was done through assigning verts directly through edit mode in the vertex group menu i wasn't actually using weight paint mode because i wanted the pinpoint precision and a lot of what i was doing to assign things based off proximity was mostly guesswork and just hoping it would work out. I made a pose to test it all out and got something I was at least alright with and moved on to the coattails. I wasn't going to do cloth physics, I haven't had good luck getting it working in the past, but I can rig it to get it to pose. I made a skirt of bones like an orc war shaman, five chains in total. Didn't even try to automatically weight them, I knew my place at this point. I posed the bones so I could see how they would eventually deform as I assigned the values. For the points at the tip of the chain, I assigned 100% influence. For points in between the joints, I assigned 50%. And then for areas in between the chains, I split the difference. Unfortunately, weight painting is one of those things that are insanely technical and abstract. For me, it's a very work by feel most of the time, and I'm not even sure if what I'm describing is even helpful. It only really gets across the spirit of what's happening, but there's nothing of substance. 
I'm sorry, everyone. Anyway, once I was finished with the code, it was time to bring everything back together, join and merge vertices, and pick some final screenshots. I experimented with some action poses, settled on this one, and then realized she was missing her whip. I added a circle, realized that was stupid, and then added a cylinder, shaped it to fit into her hand. For texture, I wasn't bothered to do anything substantial, so I just used some vertex colors. Though I wasn't too tired enough to give it a second set of vertex colors and split the RGB into three channels, one for metallic, one for roughness, and one for specular. This worked, unlike the auto-weighting. I added an HDR because I was not going to make an entire environment after eight hours of this. Added the moon for dramatic effect and then set out to make the whip. I set up a bezier curve, copied the front face of the whip, and converted it into a curve to use as a geometry bevel. Realized that I had to rotate it flat to give it the right profile and then converted the curve into a mesh. Added the spike ball at the end of her whip, gave it a paint, then realized I accidentally painted on the mouth texture, which wasn't supposed to happen. Fixed it, then got around to setting up the final turntable animation. To do this, I placed an empty and camera in the scene, set up the camera to have a proper composition, then parented it to the empty. Then I took the empty, added keyframes at 1 and 24, where I'd spun it negative 36 degrees, and then for the animation, I set the interpolation to linear to get a smooth, unaccelerated camera motion. I then hit render animation a couple dozen times because I wanted various different resolutions to see how they looked, and this was the final result after 8 hours of work. This is the conclusion of this video series, and now is the time to ask where we should go to next. With this series moving forward, I'd like to do many different kinds of projects and would also like to hear feedback on what I should do next. And I think as it stands right now, there are a few options that we can work with. Number one, we can continue with this character, clean her up some more with some IK and other rigging stuff, and maybe make a short animation. I think that would be fun to do, I've been meaning to do animation forever now. Number two, we could move on to a new character, start the process over with something fresh. I'm not gonna choose the character, I'm gonna leave it up to you. You can leave a comment down below to list what character you'd like to see. And for number three, I could do something entirely different, maybe an environment. Maybe an asset of some kind. Who knows, really, anything that isn't a character we could throw into this as well. As for deciding what we're gonna do next based off these comments, I think I got a system in mind that might be entertaining. I'll keep in my pocket for now, but if we get an overwhelming majority, I think I'll just have to go with that. I hope you enjoyed this series, this format, and I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe or leave a comment telling me that you like this video. It's one of the only ways that I know that it's worth continuing. If you want to support what I do, you can support me on Ko-Fi or check out any of my other important links down below. But other than that, yeah, that's all I have to say, so see ya.